Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Ryobi D48C Quartered Clutch Driver Mid-Grip Drill. So this is a quartered version of essentially a traditional cordless drill, having the adjustable clutch collar for clutch settings as well as the usual drill mode, which doesn't allow the clutch to slip. Pretty cheesy chuck, but it was a pretty cheap drill. Nonetheless, Ryobi, because of the clutch portion it was actually cheaper for them to actually basically use a cordless drill front end and a quartered motor so this actually has a planetary gearbox very rare in a quarter drill and they're actually it's surprisingly robust it's a planetary gearboxes are very strong and long lasting they're just a little bit more expensive than make but in this situation they're just using cordless drill parts 5.5 amp motor at 1200 RPM, so plenty of power. I've done a review of the D43, which is what they currently have available. This one, they've discontinued. I think Black and Decker actually had a corded clutch drill, but uh, this one, I'll have to say. Really nice sounding gearbox. Pretty well balanced, plenty of over molding nine screws to hold it together you may remember i have actually reviewed the d47c so exactly two generations probably 20 years they were making this thing this had a die cast aluminum gearbox same thing cordless drill front end and so the motor runs right down right down through the center line of the chuck which is kind of interesting and you actually have kind of just a little bit more rounded of a drill because the gears are in a circular type of gearbox, planetary, versus spur gears where you have an input that comes in and you have to have another gear offset to the side and then another connection to the spindle. Everything's in line. They did make some changes. The biggest changes, once again, 5.5 amps at 1200 RPM versus 4.5 amps. So they give you a little bit more power. They both have little vents up in the front to help give some cooling for the gearbox. But one thing they did here, zoom out a little bit, as you can see, they've cut, they probably cut an inch and a half or almost two inches off the length of the old one compared to the new one. So it's a lot smaller and more compact. One thing I'll give credit for is the slightly longer gearbox gives longer spacing between the two bearings that hold the spindle straight and being a die cast metal gearbox the bearings are held tight so that was one thing i gave credit for on this d47 is the cast aluminum gearbox and actual ball bearing spindle surprisingly enough but the metal gearbox really keeps it tight and i mean this is a really nice tight spindle on this drill it's actually and that's what ryobi sells these for i mean the description on the website is homeowners drills oh come on uh, you know drilling holes imagine that hanging pictures and mirrors and shelves so it's just a homeowners drill but they're actually surprisingly decent when this was on sale at least the last price Ryobi had it's been discontinued they don't make any more of these clutch drills but 40 bucks what's really sad is I've reviewed this the D43 this is the only small I guess planetary gearbox quarter drill one of the only ones remaining on the market. But look at that. $60 for the non-clutch version uh, versus $40 for the last of the clutch versions. That's a 50% increase in price. For, and the tool does not have a clutch. So like, wow. Really uh, going downhill here, Ryoui. Especially on the price competitiveness. So that's all that can really be said. Back to the spindle, since this one is plastic, and I noticed that on my D43. I wonder if you can see it up here. I'm grabbing right onto the chuck teeth. It's not too bad, but there is a bit of spindle wobble here. Just a little bit because the bearings are on this, so since it's more compact, are really close together, so they don't provide as much stability. I believe the gearbox is going to be plastic in this. It was in the D43, which had this lime green body design. And that plastic can stretch and that kind of stuff, allowing the spindle to get even more play in and into it, where, of course, the old one being metal, nice and tight. So it's just another case 
of the older power tool having a little bit less power because that's what every tool manufacturer seems to think now is the motor amps rather than how the tool actually delivers that power you get a slightly more powerful motor but you get a weaker gearbox oh and you don't get they eliminated the bubble level too on this newer one so you don't even get the bubble level anymore oh and one last thing I was noticing is on the old one we actually have 10 screws 6, 2 and then there's a little screw hiding right there right back in the back of the handle we have two mid screws there this only has one mid screw so they even found a way to eliminate one of the body screws give this one more run before we uh, tear into it but uh, for homeowners these are these were pretty competitive because they were just a lot cheaper than any battery operated drill you don't have to worry about batteries you don't have the issues because you're not, you know, you don't need a battery drill. You just need a drill around the house. Running a little extension cord isn't a big deal for something that saves you uh, quite a bit of money over a cordless drill. Arguably, it's going to have a lot better build quality than a $100 Ryobi cordless drill set, to tell you the truth. Plenty of power, and it's just a homeowner's drill. You get the same kind of mid-grip, so it's a little bit easier to, to wield. It stays a little bit more balanced. And you get the clutch, so you can you know turn it way down and make sure you don't strip out screws or any of that kind of stuff. And being 1,200 RPM and 5.5 amps, that would that's a carpenter's speed. So carpenter's drills tend to be 1,000 to 1,200 RPM because it's a balance between speed and torque for, given, for a given amount of motor power. And a lot of old Milwaukee's and Porter cables, 3.5 amps, four four and a half amps. The wall kind of accelerated at the end there, but I mean. Uh, to tell you the truth, for their price point, I think these hit kind of a sweet spot in the market. But these were unique drills, and surprisingly enough, Ryobi is one of the few holdouts. It's one of those tools where there's enough sales to support one or two companies worth of products, but not enough to support everybody making these kind of drills. So it was just kind of neat. And actually, when these were around for 40 bucks, you can't, I mean, it's hard to deny. You have. Dual ball, you have four ball bearings, two for the spindle, two for the motor, seven gear, all metal, not a metal housing, but all steel gears and ring gears, uh, or planet gears and ring gears. Nice variable speed, five and a half amp motor. They were still pretty darn competitive. They were a lot cheaper than the old ones. I was noticing one other thing they cheapened out on is that the strain relief on the older one is just a little bit thicker and a whole lot longer, actually, offering more strain relief. They shortened it up and are using less material. So they did cheapen over their old school one, but it is more compact and does have a lot of power. And for its intended market, just kind of the homeowner where they don't really want a cordless drill just because they want something that can sit around the garage for the next 10 years, 20 years, and just do whatever few drilling things that they need to do. Um, it's really just not that bad of a unit. That's all you know. All you can say about it. Too bad it's discontinued. Anyway, thanks for watching.